In this clip I'm going to show you why representing a matrix model in matrix form is so useful. We start out with a simple regression model. So it has one explanatory variable that's here, here x1, although you could say it has a second and that's the constant. But we'll leave it with that language for the time being. Now you'll possibly know from your uh, econometrics lectures that the OLS estimators for beta 1 hat looks like this, covariance between yi and x1i divided by the variance of x and beta naught hat is y bar minus beta 1 hat times x1 bar. So what happens if we have a multiple regression model? That means rather than just one explanatory variable we'll have more or as above we could always add the constant as another explanatory variable. So here we have a model yi is equal to beta naught plus beta 1 x1i one <coughs> plus beta 2 x2i plus beta 3 x3i plus an error term ui. So deriving the OLS estimators in this multiple regression model in the same manner as uh, it was done for the simple regression model is actually pretty messy okay and really not a joy and not very insightful and mostly we don't want to do it because it really depends on the number of explanatory variables we are using and here we are using three but what happens if we are using four or five or ten and then these formula change and that is really quite unsatisfying but all we need to make this more comfortable is a new notational framework and that's all it is and that's what we call the matrix setup. So I'll start out with basically replicating the multiple regression model which we had before. Here on this line I just stretch it out a bit more and provide extra space on top and below in case you're copying this you should give some space as well. So what do we mean with yi? Really that i represents the fact that there are really n observations. So we, own, we not only have one yi, but we have y1, y2, all the way to yn. And yi is just a typical element of that. And the same is true for all the other variables for x1, which we have x1, 1 to x1, n, x2, which we have x2, 1 to x2n, so that's the second explanatory variable, and the third one, x3, first observation, to x3, the nth observation. And of course, the same is true for the error terms, of which we have n. Now, all of these you can think of as vectors. Okay, so these are really vectors here. And what we should also recognize is that these coefficients are constants, so they don't change with observation i, they're just always the same for all observations. They are what we call constants. Lastly, we should recognize that really in front or uh, multiplied to the constant is a 1, and that 1 could be thought of as a vector as well, just a vector of 1s for all observations, and that will be very useful. So to continue, we need to define a few terms, and these will now be uh, vectors and matrices, and they all come from this above regression model. We'll define a vector y, and that vector y just contains all our yi's, okay, y1 to yn, and we have n of them, therefore this is an n by 1 vector. Then we shall define a vector which collects all the coefficients, beta naught to beta 3, so the dimension of this is, let me call it k, it's really 4, as you can see. We have 4 coefficients, okay, but let's call it k. That's a, a reason for this should be obvious very soon. Then we define a matrix of x, which we call x, and that just contains all the vectors of explanatory variables. So we start with the constant vector, then the vector for x1, then the vector for x2, which contains observations x21 to x2n, and then the, lastly the vector for x3. So x31 to x3, that uh, should be a 3, of course. So x3n. So this is now a matrix x. What dimension does that have? It has n rows. How many columns? Well, it's got four columns here. So let me write four, but that and that's indicated by the same color, is of course just what we said k would be. So you could say n by k as well. And of course we have a term u, which just collects all our error terms. 
Now once we've defined these terms, we can now basically represent the regression model in this form y equals x times beta plus u. And what are the dimensions of these? y is n by 1, x is n by k, beta is k by 1, I said the 4 is really uh, the general case is k, and u is n by 1. Now using matrix multiplication, we know that x times beta will have dimensions n by 1, so all these terms are n by 1. So addition is uh, possible, and that equation, at least dimension-wise, uh, is okay. So this representation is identical to the multiple regression model which we had before. Okay, so you'd say, so what, what's the fuss about? Well, the reason why this is so convenient is the following. This red representation of the regression model, and we shall call it the matrix representation of the regression model. This is so convenient because really it will always look the same regardless of how many explanatory variables you have. So it doesn't change with that blue dimension k. Okay, It doesn't change with the number of explanatory variables we have. And if we call k the number of explanatory variables, then really we are including the constant as one explanatory variable in here. This invariance with respect to k is an enormous advantage of this matrix representation. Beta hat, which is the estimator for beta, the representation of beta hat will also not change with respect to k. All right, so that beta hat, we will have a matrix representation of our equivalent, or that will be the equivalent of covariance y x divided by variance of x, but that will not depend on k. And remember we said in, in the previous representation that did depend on k. So what is it? What is the OLS estimator of beta? So what is the expression for beta hat? So the expression for beta hat is x prime x inverse x prime y. Okay, so there were a couple of terms which you will only understand if you know matrix algebra. And this is why we need to know some matrix algebra if we do econometrics at this level. And how much matrix algebra do we need to know? Well, we can see from this equation there's this dashed thing, this or prime thing. This is what are called transposes, matrix transposes. So we do know, need to know what these are. Then we are multiplying matrices together here. So we need to know about matrix multiplication and how that works and when it doesn't work, importantly. Uh, thirdly, and the other sort of strange thing in here is this exponent to the negative one. This is what's called matrix inversion. It's really the equivalent of division in uh, the matrix world. And to understand what matrix inversion is, we also need to know about the concept of a rank of a matrix and the uh, determinant of a matrix. Okay, These are two sort of ingredients into matrix inversion. And lastly, it's not immediately obvious from this, we, are, we will also want to learn, if you want to know about multiplication, about matrix addition.